Now, uh, when we get to heaven, what's going to happen? Our actions will be what? Judged. When we get to now, everybody go to heaven now. When I say everybody, every Satan going where? To heaven. Our actions will be judged. It matters how we live in the earth. Say it matters. Yes. What matters? How we live where? Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It matters how we live where? In the earth. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. All right, all right. Praise the Lord. Are you there? 1 Corinthians chapter what? 3. Looking at verse 12. May I read from the, uh, verse 12, uh, may I read from Amplified? Okay. But if anyone builds up on the foundation, whether he be, whether it be with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, the works of each one will become plainly, openly known, shown for what it is. For the day of Christ will disclo disclose and declare it. Because it will be revealed with what? Fire. And the fire will, will test and critically appraise the character and worth of the work each person has what? If the works which any person has built on this foundation, any product of his effort, whatever, survives the test, this test, he will get what? His reward. But if any of you, if any person's works is burned up under the test, he will suffer the loss of what? Of it all. Losing his what? Though he himself will be saved, but only as one who has passed through fire. That means you'll have the smell of smoke on you. And in heaven, there should be no what? No smell of smoke. The consequences. Don't turn loose no spoonful. <laughs> Five of y'all done heard that say, that's fine. That's, that's all right. If you don't know the song, leave it alone. Okay, and if you don't know the song, leave it alone. Amen, amen. Now, the foundation which we build our lives upon will someday be tested in heaven. The foundation which we build our lives upon will be will someday be tested where? In heaven. For example, each of us will have to answer the question, have I fashioned my life after the world's standards or after God's standards? Was I trying to please God or was I trying to please man or the world? Who was I trying to what? Now, it is God's will that we receive a full reward in heaven for living a life that pleases him. And what kind of reward? Full reward. Say, never full reward. Turn, if you will, with me. Are you there? Are you there? Yeah. To 2 John. That's the epistle of John. 2 John. That's 1 John, 2 John, and what? 3 John. Now, we ain't going to 3rd. And we're not going to what? First. Where are we going? Second John. Tell me if I got it, I got it. I'm, I'm going there if you hadn't found it. All right. You're in second what? John. And when you get to second John, I want you to look at verse 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Now, he's talking about you can lose your what? Reward. Let's look at it amplified. Look to yourselves. Take care that you may not lose, throw away, or destroy all that we and you have labored for, but that you may preserve until you win and receive back a perfect reward in full. God wants you loaded down there. Tell your neighbor, I receive it. I receive it. Come on, look at somebody and say, I receive it. Believe it or not, many Christians have chosen a life that displeases God. What you do in secret will be made. 
There's nothing that's done in the dark that will not come to the light. Now, you got to know Satan. You, you, you probably don't know him right. But he'll lie to you and get you in a crack and then tell everybody on you. I ain't, now, initially, I ain't going to tell. Ain't nobody going to know. Ain't nobody going to know. Just two of y'all. Ain't nobody there. Just you and your, you, you and that. Ain't nobody going to know. And you got this comfort. It sure ain't, is it? Sure ain't, is it? Sure ain't. You go ahead on. And then when you come out, he starts telling you, everybody going to know. Because <laughs> you come out and folk looking at you. What, 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 what you looking at? What, what, you, what, you, what, you, what you look at? It, 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 what, what you looking at, Trotty? <laughs> he makes you feel like everybody in the world knows. What you looking at me like that for? Why, why are you looking at me like that? See, you feel like everybody what? Knows it now. And when the devil get it, he is not a refrigerator. He ain't holding nothing. He's not holding anything. The Bible, it says he is called the accuser of the brethren. He has set you up and then tell on you. You know, you ladies got that intuition. You little head of a brother. Y'all can look at each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What you been doing? What you been doing? And, 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 and they said, what, what you talking about? What you talking about? What you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. What you been doing? <laughs> and then they go and tell you. <laughs> and now they got you and everybody else to be concerned about because if they're, they're reluctant to think that you what? That you might tell somebody else. Who will tell somebody else? Who will tell somebody? Pretty soon the world what? Knows it. That's the way the accuser is. Hey. All right, let's look at it again. Let's look at it again. You're in 2 John, verse what? 1, verse what? 8. He said, look to yourselves, that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. The Amplified says this way. Look to yourselves, take care that you may not lose, throw away, or destroy all that we and you have labored for, but that you may pres preserve, persevere, I'm sorry, persevere until what? You win and receive back a perfect reward. How? In full. In full. Bunch of neighbors say, I'm striving. In the name of Jesus, I'm striving. And I will get it. I will make it. So many Christians choose a life that displeases God. It's a choice you make. I didn't say many sinners. Many Christians choose a life that displeases God and try to hide it. You remember that song? Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. Has no, has, uh, he's called the accuser of the brethren. And when you have done wrong, it looks like everybody knows. I mean, that's the way he does you. He'll get you so hot and heat to get involved in something. And then when you do, everybody look like what? Know it. Why are you looking at me like that? Why are you looking at me like that? Yeah, I'm looking at you like that. What do you mean I'm looking at you like that? Yeah, I'm looking at you like that. But that, he's telling you what? They're looking at you like that. He's a liar and the father of it, isn't he? Amen. Ain't that me? He's the father of a lie. Now, once judgment uh, concerning our rewards and losses in heaven is set, it is final. Once judgment of our losses and rewards are set, it is what? Final. His judgments will not be changed. Turn over to Hebrews chapter 6. His judgment. That's God's judgment. Now, not man's judgment. Whose judgment? God. Yeah, I see. Well, you know, God looks at my heart. And you see, man looks at the outer appearance, but God looks at my what? God sees you in every situation. That's what you need to be doing when you're about to go over there and get crazy. You need to what? Remember, God sees your heart and your body. Amen. Now, this is just a warning. Tell you, it's just a warning, just a warning, just a warning. Amen, because the Bible says many of the what? Uh, the trials of our brothers and what? Sisters. 
Yeah, many of them. Say, say many of them. You in Hebrews chapter 6? Let's look at verses 1 and 2. Check your neighbor and say, let me see. You might be faking. You might be faking. Come on. Y'all all right? Yeah, I'm mighty quiet up in here. And say, I was with something, you know. <laughs> Come on, praise the Lord. Uh, Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptism and the laying on of hands and of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. The, the Amplified says, Therefore, let us go on and get past the elementary stage in the teaching and the doctrines of Christ, the Messiah, advancing steadily toward the completeness and perfection that belongs to spiritual what? Maturity. Let us not again be laying the foundation of repentance. In other words, going, Lord, I forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. I repent, Lord. I, rep I repent. See, you get to the point that the devil won't have to even condemn you no more. But you live a life of condemn condemnation. Your whole life be under condemnation. And people can look at you and you think they know something they don't even know. What has happened? Condemnation has what? Set in. He encouraged you to get involved and now he's telling you everybody what? Knows. You got to know this rest. And the abandonment of dead works, dead formalism, and of the faith by which you turn to what? God. Take it if it's time to turn to God if you hadn't already done so. Completely. Come on, when? How? Completely. Say completely. Amen. Now, God has prepared, has pre-planned pre assignment for each of us. God has pre-planned an assignment for each of us. Say each of us. What's the name? Say that means you too. We each must discover his assignment for our lives. You have to do that. Sometimes prophetically it can be announced, but God would rather that you learn from him. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Tell you what, God wants you to learn something from him. Because he loves you too. Ephesians chapter 2. Look at verse 10. I want to read it from King James and then we go to the Amplified. You there? We are his workmanship, created in who? Christ Jesus unto what kind of works? Which God hath before ordained that we should what? So he's, he's telling us that this is the way God wants us to live. Say, God wants us to live. Now look at the Amplified. He said, we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of what? Time, that we should walk in them. Look at this. Why? What's the result? Living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. God wants you to live what kind of a life? A good life. Say, I choose to live the good life. Look at somebody else. Say, I choose to do what? To live the good life. Amen. We are born for a specific purpose. Not because of what your mom and your dad have thought about. And that's good too. And God has already chosen it for us. We do not get to choose our purpose. Say, we do not get to do what? Our what? Our purpose. You don't get to do that. That's not your choice. Your purpose. That's your reason for existence in what? In life. Uh, many Christians lose their heavenly rewards because they fail to discover and fulfill the will of God for their lives. If you don't hunger after God's calling on your life, there's no child of God that God hasn't given a, a, an assignment in this earth. And you have to know that for your what? Self. Prophetically, that can happen sometimes, but it's not always the way that it comes. God wants to talk to who? You. Why don't you say, God wants to speak with you? He wants a personal time with you. Come on, say, he wants personal time with you. Amen. Amen. So many Christians will lose their heavenly rewards. And you don't want to be up there, and you, 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 you can't even stand around. You're so like... You, you know, everybody trying to wonder when you're going to sell it down. Because everybody won't have the same rewards. And you will know everybody in earth. You know everybody in heaven. And they will know everybody in hell. Everybody in hell will know one another. Y'all might be quiet up in here. But it's true. 
you will know them. And you will not be grieving over them either. In heaven, you, you can't grieve. In hell, it doesn't help to grieve. Because <laughs> there's weeping and wailing of teeth, what? Gnashing of teeth, what? All the time in hell. But in heaven, there's joy unspeakable and full of what? Glory. So in heaven, they see you, but they can't have no pain for you. In hell, they're hurting, but it ain't helping. <laughs> I'm trying to stay in the direction of God. I tell you, we need to stay in the direction of God. When we fulfill his will for us, God is pleased. In other words, when we do his word on a daily basis. When we do what? Do his word. His word is his will. When we do his word, how often? On a daily basis. There is a place we can expect to show up in. Tell anybody other place we can expect to show up in. When we do what? We do his what? His word. And what is his word? His will. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29. I know y'all got your tabs. You're right there. Verse 11. And I want to read this out of the Amplified. Look what it says. For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare. And, now, it's not like welfare down here now. I got to help you out there now. <laughs> if I'm going to heaven to get that kind of welfare, I ain't going. <laughs> let know. He's talking about fair and well. Say, let me say, fair and well. Jesus. <laughs> but I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare. Fair and what? Well. And what? Peace. And not for what? To give you hope. In your what? Final life card. So I got hope. That comes directly from God. Come on, so I got hope. That comes directly from God. Now, it is unwise not to discover the will of God for our lives. Each person should know the will of God for your life. Now, I don't mean that the you know, Lord wants you to have and not, not need. No, I'm talking about deeper than that. What has God planned for your life? What is his plan? What's his purpose for your life? Why are you here? You need to know that. Hunt your neighbor say, you need to know that. Amen. The Bible says, many other plans in a man's mind, but it is the Lord's purpose for him that shall be what? So you need to know that. God wants to tell you that, but you're too busy. It's not about your job. It's about your God. You don't spend no time with God. Now, I'm thinking, did I call in a name? No. But you need to spend some quality time with God. Amen. Quality time can be 15 minutes. Just 15 minutes. And not just reading and listening, but sitting and letting him talk to you. Now, initially what's going to happen, you've got to get a lot of clutter out of your head. Well, you know you forgot to close that drawer. And that, is that door down there closed? Well, now, is the oven on? See, he's trying to get you away from it. He said, I'm going to add 15 more minutes. I'm going to go and check all this stuff. I'm going to come right back down and give him 15 more minutes. <laughs> but he, he wants to keep you, what, busy. So God has plans for us. He loves us. Your parent could never love you like God does. Now, they love you. You know that, don't you? All right. Say, God loves us, and we know that. Come on, say, God loves us, and we know that. Amen. It is unwise not to discover the will of God for your life. It is unwise not to discover the will of God for your life. What are you talking about? Purpose? You need to know God's will for your life. What has he called you to do? What's the assignment on you? You can't be copying other people. You have to know exactly what God has called you to do. Amen, Walt. Amen. Sometimes it's just to be a blessing. It's about sitting beside the people, you know, and being, you know, prayed up, and they come in and all that stuff on them. Might have been drunk last night and put some stuff in their mouth, not be smelling. And here you are sitting and you're not saying anything about it. And you every now and then say, well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, God is good, sister. God is good, brother. You know, God's working on you, isn't it? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And every now and then touch them because the anointing is always in you. It don't come just when you come to church. It's in you. And the anointing destroys the yoke and removes what? 
Next time they come, you can't smell nothing because ain't nothing been drunk. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, say it like you mean it. So how do we discover and fulfill God's given assignment for us? How do we do it? All right, number one. We must pursue our specific assignment with effort. See, most people don't like putting no effort when it comes down to doing something for God. But girl, I'm tired. You know, I've been working all day. But if it's the world, you work your fingers to the bone. You got to reverse that. Tell you, it's time to change that. Come on, say it's time to change that. Amen. How do you do it? Through prayer and confessing the word. How do you do it? Through prayer and confess. That don't mean all day long you're down on your face. No, you can pray while you're walking. You can pray while you're in your car. You can pray while you, when you leave your buddy somewhere. You don't have to, oh, Lord. No, you don't have to do that. <laughs> you just say, Lord have mercy. You know what I'm talking about. They ain't even know, you know. God gives us clues about his will for our lives. For example, he would place within us a God-given passion Amen. for something. And I, there's not a person here that does, that does not have at least one passion for something that is good. Tell anybody, I know you got a passion for something that is good. Also, he gives each of us a certain grace or anointing or talent. There's something that you can do that nobody else can do like you do in the kingdom of God. Tell anybody, there's something that you can do that nobody else can do like you in the kingdom of God, but you, in the name of Jesus. Amen? So when we use our grace for his kingdom and purposes, we begin to discover his specific will for us. When we use it, not to, like the grace of God is upon me. What you doing with it? Hey, you got to do something with it. Come on, say, you got to do something with it. Amen. There's a grace. Some people have a grace for cooking, and some people got a grace for cutting hair. Some people got a grace for this and a grace for it, but they don't do nothing with it. Hey, neighbor, it's time for you to do something. Jesus should be the only one we imitate. As he is, so are we. Where? In this world. We should not use our grace to emulate famous people in the world. I want to be like them, like Mike. Okay, see? Now, nothing wrong want to be like Mike. Shoot like him, you know, and get the rewards. But that should not be your main what? Goal. So that should not be your main goal. We must begin to thank God every day for giving us the knowledge of his will. Why don't your neighbors thank God, thank God. Every, day every day for giving us, giving us the, knowledge the knowledge of his will. Now, God's not going to condemn you. If there's any condemnation coming to you, it won't be coming from God. It comes from old Slewfoot. He'll encourage you to get into something, and he'll be the one always condemning you. You know you don't deserve the blessing of God. You know what you did. Sure do, don't. God does not condemn us. The enemy takes that. My time is up, and I thank you for yours. Get a lot of hand clap.